step number one, create a template so that you can refer back to it whenever you want to start a new project. Over here in my user tab, I've got template number one. And when I hit template number one, it loads up my project with all my groups labeled. Uh, and obviously um, I can switch templates. So if I go to new, then it will become a complete blank slate. Uh, if I go back to template one, uh, as you can see, I've got uh, some of my beats here that are starred or favorited. If I favorite template one and then hit favorites, the favorite button here, then my template um, sits at the top along with my other uh, favorited beats or projects. Important note, when you do create your template, you need to lock it so that when you're in the beat making phase, you don't accidentally save over your template. So this is how you do it. You go to your template, find and find our template here, right click, get info on a Mac, and then you want to make it a stationary pad and locked. So when I go back to machine and hit save in my template, now a dialog box will pop up and it will have save project as. So it's not rewriting over my template. It's allowing me to save my changes to another folder. Step number two, now that you've created your template, now you can set machine to open your template automatically when you load it. So to do this, go to machine and scroll down to preferences, then go to default and where it says standalone template, you will need to click this folder and then search for your template. My template is here. And if I open, it will then load my template file. Whenever I load machine, it will then load my new template. So to demonstrate this, I will just delete all of these groups because if I don't and select new, it will load my template. Okay, so let's go ahead and close the machine. And let's go ahead and open up machine. And there's my template loaded. Also, just going back to what I just said, if for whatever reason I am in a session and I want to create a new uh, template, I could just go ahead, hit new or command N on a Mac and it will load my template automatically. Now, if I want to remove this template, go back to default, then where this X mark is, just cross it out, close, and there you go. Whenever you create a new project, it will then just load it blank because it doesn't have a template reference file to refer to. That's tip number two. Tip number three, always save your projects as save projects with samples. When you save project with samples, it puts all of your samples and your project file into one folder. Uh, and to do this, you just hit save project with samples and then you select the window and then it pops up and then you can put um, your uh, project wherever you want and hit save. So let's just go into projects. And then we just create a new folder, call it a test and then create, and then we can call the file whatever we want. So we're just going to call it test, uh, or the project file rather, um, and then hit save. Once you do that, then you've got the option to delete unused files. Um, so those are just samples where you've chopped and you know, no longer need the parts that are not actually part of the, the song, the beat. So we can select that button if you want to. If not, you can go ahead and just hit save. And now this creates a folder on your computer. If you're working on a project with somebody else with a machine, you can just give them that folder and it will load up on their computer just as it would on your computer. So that is step number three. Step number four. This is all about tags. And when you're creating your library over time, you want to make it easier for yourself to find your samples, your groups, what have you. And so to do this, you can go into the library pane and here I'm on the user tab and I've got a sample selected. So to create a tag, I'll demonstrate. 
Oh, use cool and hit apply. And you see that cool is at the top. And if I select cool, it will then select the sample that I tagged. Uh, if I want to remove that tag, I can then just go ahead and untick cool at the bottom here and then hit apply and cool is removed. So you can do this with samples, with projects, literally anything um, in the lab library pane. So yeah, that's step number four, tip number four. Tip number five, and this one is regarding housekeeping and it's to do with native access. It's an application you use to load or to install all your uh, native instruments uh, products. So what I've done here is set my content location to my external AC drive. And to do that, you go to native access, then to preferences. And at the bottom, your content location, you just want to browse and select your external drive and then hit save. So what this does is frees up space on your internal hard drive on the computer. And better yet, if you go for an SSD external, which I'm going to be doing soon, it will then load your samples faster. That's tip number five.